Indian government was galvanized into action today, summoning the Irish ambassador over the death of Indian dentist Savita, who was denied an abortion. Over in Dublin, the Indian ambassador met Irish authorities after protests were staged outside the Irish parliament. Ireland was ordered has ordered two probes into the incident that took place earlier this week and after doctors refused to abort Sabita's baby despite a miscarriage. But India remains reluctant to conduct an independent probe of its own. Mahasiddiqui in Delhi and Lavina Tandon in Dublin bring you this report. The Endokani government is under pressure in Dublin and in Delhi. Thousands of protesters thronged Dublin, sparking a global debate on the country's abortion laws. The issue echoed in Parliament even as terms of reference and membership of the inquiry team were being finalised. The team will include an outside expert in gynaecology. Meanwhile, India finally spoke up for Savita. Silenced by a law that denied her the right to life, Savita's death and the global outrage against it has forced action, belatedly almost three weeks after her death. Finally, New Delhi, that till yesterday was playing it safe, saying it will wait for the result of the Irish probes into Savita's death, summoned the Irish ambassador. At the meeting, India expressed concern and angst over Savita's untimely death. New Delhi also hoped that a probe initiated by Ireland would be independent. The government also asked Ireland to provide timely information on the progress of the probe. The Irish ambassador assured India full cooperation, also indicating that the terms of reference for the probe are being framed and will be released shortly. But we do sincerely hope that uh, there can be no greater uh, matter of religious belief than the, the obligation to save the life of a, of a mother. Uh, if you can't save the child, you at least save the life of a mother. But this is really for the Irish government to examine and I do believe that in all sensitivity they will examine it and see uh, what can be done, what should have been done. The government there is also mindful of the opposition BJP taking up Savita's cause. The party picketed the Irish embassy in Delhi, calling her death a human rights violation. Irrespective of the law providing for the Savita's right of life to be upheld, Savita was murdered by the medical staff of the University Hospital at Galloway. He has acknowledged a need for speedy and accurate investigation. Basically, why impose the law on someone who is not non-Irish, or uh, sorry, someone who is non-Irish, or uh, you know, someone who is not Catholic? The death has also stirred Ireland. Anti- and pro-life supporters are engaged in a heated debate over a law amended in 1983, tilting the scales heavily in favour of the unborn child. Lack of clarity on a 1992 Supreme Court ruling over this law is being blamed for Savita's death. I have said very clearly that we need to bring legal clarity to this issue. We need to ensure that in this country uh, that we do not have a doubt uh, which arises uh, in a hospital, uh, in a set of circumstances uh, which puts uh, a mother's life at risk. Any religion has no business in interfering in the rights of women or anybody else and it's time that we separated these things out. It's not an issue for religion, it's an issue actually related to women's equality. Ireland should resist this pressure to legislate for abortion. There is a very powerful and wealthy pro-abortion lobby which has been using court cases. So the people of Ireland are opposed to abortion and they have enshrined that opposition to abortion in their constitution. Bureau Report, headlines today. It's now time for the centre stage face-off tonight. Is Ireland using the law as fig leaf? You know, Ireland has been sitting over amendments to this abortion law. Abortion in Ireland is banned. It's one of the very few countries in the world which hasn't moved with the times, which is still stuck in this position of banning abortion. There are very serious questions being asked about mismanagement of Savita's case and whether India is doing enough. There are inconsistencies in Ireland's defense. Should the government of India be pushing harder and is it time to abort the law. Joining us on the center stage face off this evening are Father Dominic Emmanuel, spokesperson of Delhi Catholic Church Association. Thank you very much, Father, for joining us. 
Ranjana Kumari is the director for Center for Social Research. Uh, she's joining us on this broadcast as well. Also with us from London is Paul Telly, uh, General Secretary of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. I want to go across first to Father Dominic Emmanuel. Do you not believe, sir, from all the details that have emerged in the Savita case so far, that there is a very clear pressing need for the law to be changed and changed at the earliest? First of all, do we know all the details as to what really happened? So far, the government is making investigations. We do not have a clear picture as to what really happened. It is possible, it is possible, I am not saying that it has happened, that the doctors could have made an error of judgment. There could have been an error of judgment. Because the position, I don't know how he said this is a Catholic country. Ireland is not a Catholic country. It is a Republic of Ireland. So that, that, that's where he made first mistake. And maybe he made a mistake elsewhere as well about uh, the issue of the child and the mother. The position of the church is very clear that all life is important. I am surprised that people are thinking that church is at fault. Church is not at all at fault. Church is asking for defense of life of everyone, mother as well as the child. Everyone. Life is... No, but in this case, life it became very clear. Yes, that's what I am coming... Because of the condition of the child, the condition of the mother was in... That is what we are saying that possibly, possibly the doctor might have goofed up. We do not know. Let the uh, results come out. Because she died of septicemia. Septicemia could be caused by many reasons. It not necessarily... Because the child's heart was still beating. It is possible that what she was asking for was right, maybe. But what we are saying is that the focus should never be on abortion. The focus should be always on saving life. No, but why not? Here is no, the no, why not? A woman is going for abortion. She is not Catholic. Abortion. She says it is I, a question of Catholic or not. No, Catholic. because she is begging for life. She says please allow. Let me remind. To let me remind you that the fundamental universal declaration on human rights. No religion there. Universal declaration on human rights says that all, everybody has a right to life, to be born, not to die, and not to kill. And this is outright killing. I, I hate this word abortion. They should clearly call it murder. That they are murdering a defenseless child who has no tongue to speak, who cannot fight for itself, who cannot defend itself. You go around and kill these uh, children who, who, have no, who are uh, defenseless. That is absolutely wrong. You must save life. And this is the whole contradiction I find in this debate. They are calling the church and saying as if they are, they are uh, wrong. Church is talking about defending life, mother's life and the child's Mr. life. Give me a moment. I want to go across to Paul Dali. Mr. Dali, do you not believe that this case demonstrates a very important need to abort the abortion law in Ireland? You know, here's this young girl. She's pleading with the doctors to abort the fetus so that she can live. And the doctors refuse to do so. No, as has been stated, we don't know all the medical facts. We haven't seen the medical record. It came out in your report um, that the story only hit the press some three weeks after she died. Who was sitting on that information? For abortion, politicians were working out their story. I'm afraid it doesn't look good from their point of view. I think it's very important to remember that this story is being manipulated. A few years ago, uh, uh, a woman of Indian ex ex extraction called Sajit Rao died in Bradford, in England, after an abortion. Was that, was that an um, international scandal? No, it was hushed up. So you're saying that the report has been manipulated, but the fact is that everyone in Ireland who wishes to go in for an abortion simply travels to England. There are about 4,000 cases every year. You know, in England, abortion has been legal since 1967. So this law is made infectious by the very fact that people just travel if they want to get an abortion. So it's high time that Ireland too gave people the choice to decide whether or not they wanted to give birth to a child. Should, should we be allowed to take children to countries where they are not protected and kill them? Should we be allowed to take unborn children to countries where they are not protected and kill them? No, that is not a civilized way to behave. We should go back to the principles which have been mentioned of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and protect the human rights of all human beings. Now, in this case, when it's not clear whether the right medical treatment was given at the right time. And if this mother needed medical treatment to save her life, then that, that, is, that is appropriate to do, but not to kill the child in the process. One wants to try and save both lives 
Ireland has been very successful at doing that. Ireland has a much better record in terms of maternal health. Fewer women die in pregnancy and childbirth in Ireland, far fewer than in England, for example, where we have legalized abortion, widespread abortion. Ireland is a much safer place. There are some women who travel from Ireland to England for abortion, but it is a much smaller proportion uh, compared to the, uh, in, in terms of the numbers of, of, of uh, babies being conceived. Okay. The, the rate You're saying the, the details are being manipulated details. in keeping with the political context to the manner in which the story is being interpreted in Ireland. I want to go across to Ranjana Kumari because Father Emmanuel also made the same point that we don't know enough details yet. We are jumping in a matter which happened in a country far away from ours where the record uh, when it comes to infant mortality is much better than India. In India, amongst uh, you know, from about 1 lakh children, 212 die. In Ireland, it's only one. So they have a far better record. And therefore, India shouldn't be diving into this debate. Ranjana Kumari. Well, uh, the matter is very clear. This uh, Dr. Savita died because the doctor did not perform abortion under the obligation of the law of the land. And in, in, the, in case of uh, Ireland, they have not followed the EU request. They have not followed the same human rights convention where a woman has a right over her body. W women has a right over her life. They, they have not really changed the law even when the request was made. In fact, I want to remind the person who was defending Ireland that in 1992, Ireland Supreme Court itself gave the judgment that when the mother's life is in danger, try to save the life of the mother. I do not know this kind of a vague situation that has been created because of the law and the legal framework within which the doctor was functioning that he could not perform the abortion in spite of the fact that the doctor, woman, Savita, she's doctor herself, she kept requesting that please, you know, let me live. I know that I will die because the die child, uh, you know, is there. And, and they waited till the child's heartbeat went out and by the time the, the, the you know poison spread and she died so I think it's plain and clear case of you know state controlling the body of women and doctor using the same control killing this woman I think there is absolutely no other explanation for what has happened to Dr. Savita this, this is, is absolutely unacceptable is women produce children it is body. women's body which goes through it's physical psychological all it's a pro abortion body issue. which is making so a I whole one by one, one by one. What are you talking? In India, Ranjana Kumar, you made some points. Father Emmanuel wants to respond to it. One, one point, no, one point, Rahul. In India, we have Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, which protects women that if the fetus is unhealthy, if there is danger to life of a woman, we do have a right to abort. Father Manuel is living in the same country. What is he talking about? There are thousands and thou lakhs and lakhs of abortions being performed because of the reasons, many other reasons in this country. But in Ireland, because women did not have the right they go all the way, even one woman leaving the country and going for abortion to another country, do you think this is justice? Okay, you made your point. Let, let the father respond. I'm sorry with me. Let Ran the father respond. Ranjana, Ranjana, I live in the same country and I'm sorry to say that I'm ashamed that lakhs and lakhs children are aborted and because of this lax view on abortion, we have this dismal proportion of girl no, child being killed. On the one hand, you come out and defend the uh, no, no, female feticide and on the is, other hand, you are uh, propagating this please. idea of uh, abortion. I mean, it is a shameless no. thing. And I would like to, Rahul, it, in, it, emphasize no. that please call this by its proper name. It is not abortion, it is murder. Murder of an innocent what baby who cannot defend. What, what sir, I am talking, talking yes, killed, it is, it is a murder no, and this father, whole, father, this is a red father, herring to call this a right of one by one father, right of a woman over her body. No, I me, have, this is an absolutely this. red let herring. Me, let me make my point. No, no, you cannot do that because it is the woman's body, it is her body which goes through all medical, psychological, physical, biological process to produce a child. 
how can you prevent a woman you 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 uh, in order to save the, the child they make it till the last heartbeat and they kill the mother what are you talking about how, whose life was gone both mother and, uh, and and the child both died because of the law because of the legal framework within which island women are put into and i think this this is absolutely unjustified i you are shifting between a, you are shifting you are, between a particular no, no, case of no, ireland I'm where you are talking we do not know the details and the Absolutely. general law about that abortion. Is, Let us make that distinction, please. Absolutely. Let us make it very clear it what we are right talking about. Let us define. Let us define Father what we are Manuel, talking about. This is. Let us define we what we are talking about. about. Ranjana ji, right. let okay. us define, we, clarify, DNA. What we are talking about? We are talking about one case where okay. doctors let might me, have picked up let me, let me and the other case of abortion as a law. We are talking about Dr. Savita's saying because murder. Of this lack we are view. talking about Dr. Savita's murder because of the legal framework that Ireland is. We are talking then about. Then should file a case against the doctor. We are talking about human rights. Ranjana Kumar, where is the case of Paul Tali, Mr. Tali? Ranjana Kumar, I am coming back to you. Paul Tali, do you not think that this is a clear case of medical negligence? A doctor who is not a Catholic says a what my fetus, no, my health is in danger, doctors refuse to do so. Should Ireland not be taking strict action against the doctors whose actions caused the death of Savita? In, may I just point out that in India, the president-elect of the Federation of, of Obstetric and Gyneco Gynecological Services, Dr. Hima Vivakar, has said that having an abortion might not have made any difference Why to the outcome for Savita. That's a medical opinion from India of an expert. You need to listen to those. Now, he is only expressing it conditionally because, like the rest of us, he doesn't have all the facts. We have to recognize that until the facts are all known, this is, there's a lot of propaganda going around and a lot of hysteria which needs to be resisted. No, but since 1992, when the Supreme Court ruled that there must be circumstances when abortion should be allowed, especially when the woman's life is in danger, Ireland and the government over there hasn't acted. You know, isn't it about time that this anti-abortion law be aborted, Mr. Ali? It was a very poor judgment and it's put the Irish Parliament in a very difficult position. But to frame legislation that makes the right to life of the child conditional is problematic in terms of both the Constitution and international human rights law. It was a misuse of the role of, of the court to put the judiciary, to, to put the leg legislature in that position. Ireland should continue to protect the lives of mothers and unborn children, the lives of all its citizens. Rajna Kumari, do you think the Indian government is doing enough? They've summoned the ambassador. Is that enough or should we be pressing harder? I, I think the situation in India I think we should be pressing harder because, because let me, the gentleman who is talking from the other end, he should then accept that rest of the Europe is wrong because rest of the Europe, women have the right, except for Malta, except for Monaco, except for Ireland, other countries have the uh, legislation in which women can go for abortion. What is he talking about? Doesn't Holland has it, France has it, Germany has it, they are all, all wrong? You mean to say that all those countries are doing uh, you know, illegal things by allowing their women to go for abortion? I think you, Indian government has to press harder because already we can see signs of investigation getting botched up. Now, from the other side, now they are quoting Indian doctors. They are quoting all kinds of things. I think it's important that they should look at the abortion law which compelled the doctor not to abort the child till the woman died and the child died. Both of them. This is plain and simple case of a wrong legal framework within the country which does not allow women right over their body and also under pressure of that law, doctor neglected Savita's request to abort the child till but the child died should and, and she died herself. For action against the doctors who were responsible for Savita's so death. That is a completely different issue. That's a completely different issue that how we I'm, deal I'm, with a doctor I'm, is certainly if he has so the doctors and, and Rahul, I just want to, ask, by I, the law. I want to ask you and ask Ranjana, every day thousands of doctors who do surgery, before they take the person to the surgery table, they get a signed uh, form by their relatives that anything could happen in the process of this operation, don't they? Don't they? Why? Because anything can actually happen during a medical process. 
and a person may die and thousands of them die I mean, on our streets police and people simply take sticks and kill people on the street I've never seen such a outrage on the people who are killed on the streets by the people taking law into I, their own hands I, I tell and you by maybe a by mistake I tell you the and I am, re I am reiterating it is because of this lax view on abortion that we are having this condition of female feticide the way we have we should be all ashamed of it of course not of course not it's not at all related it's gender based sex selection is something totally different it is the bias of indian society which has the male child preference that is why gender based sex selection now rahul let me tell you one thing let me tell you one thing that this argument that ireland government will inquire without any framework of inquiry i think indian government should not accept that condition Clearly, Dr. Savita has been killed because of the framework of the law within which abortion could not be conducted. I think this is a clear case of a country having wrong laws and also a clear case of medical practitioners not saving the life of Savita using the pretext of that law. And this law has not been changed. Five governments have gone since 1992 because Catholic population in Ireland is 84 percent. No government can afford to uh, uh, annoy the population in spite of the fact 56 percent people voted to change the law. Law has not been changed. That means in, uh, Irish women do not have right over their own body. What more can you say about it? But Mr. Country? Tully, the law is in some senses you know completely pointless because women who want to get abortions done travel outside the country shouldn't Ireland ensure that yes. their laws are conducive for women to decide whether or not they want to go in for an abortion no you you can't say that simply because one country allows something then every other country should allow it we would allow all sorts of abuses we, this is the this is the way in which um, international issues uh, should, should, should not be settled by taking people abroad um, to abuse them. That is wrong. We, we, we cannot permit that. We have to advance higher standards of human rights. If the law was so, uh, if, if this case was so clear, there would be no need for an inquiry. It's because of the lack of facts about this okay. case, because the truth of it isn't known, that we have to find out more before jumping to conclusions. And it's not, um, uh, one has to remember that in Ireland, uh, the Irish health system serves the welfare of mothers extremely well. It often has the best record in the world um, for maternal health. And to, uh, to damage that system on the basis of hysteria um, stirred up by unknown facts about a, a case which has been suspiciously reported um, is, is, is simply okay. a, uh, an alarmist approach. I'm going to leave it over there. To all my guests for joining us, thank you very much. We've got a correspondent in Dublin. She's tracking this very, very closely. Lavinia Tamil will continue reporting. You saw her report at the top of the show. We'll track this story over the next several hours because a young girl is dead and the doctors who were responsible for her death must be held accountable. That is very, very important. To my three guests for joining me on the center stage face off, thank you very much. We're slipping into a break. When we come back, a power tussle between Ajay Markham and Sheila Dikshit. Markham's been elevated to cabinet rank, but the minister is taking on Sheila Dikshit for her failure to bring the price of electricity under control. He says that the price of electricity should be falling in Delhi post privatization that's not happening the Delhi government and the electricity regulatory commission are to blame we'll get you that explosive interview Mark and Sheila Patasul when we come back on the other side of a quick break stay with us we'll be back in a moment Shivas Live with Chivalry presents Center Stage in association with the new thought